Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Adler Planetarium and our Youth Captures the Colorful Cosmos presentation featuring Wordle. With Wordle, what we'll be doing is asking the students to rotate around their desks and sit at each other's work of art that they created through the Micro Observatory website and the Youth Captures the Colorful Cosmos program. And we'll have them engage in each other's pieces of artwork uh, by writing down words and terms and phrases that they believe best describes their artwork. Uh, they'll be sitting from station to station, uh, critiquing and helping other students with their project. And we're going to put you through a quick tutorial of the Micro Observatory Robotic Telescope Network website, uh, also known as microobservatory.org. I know it has a fancy name up here, but uh, once you type in www.microobservatory.org, uh, it'll direct you direct to this website here. Um, first things first, um, this is a network of five weatherproof telescopes in Cambridge, Massachusetts and Armado, Arizona. They are fully automated and controlled by users all over the internet, and thus all over the world. Um, there are images uploaded every night, and there are more than 50,000 users on this website at a time, at its, uh, at its peak. So let's start out with going to Observing with NASA, which is this little button right here, this little tab right there. We'll click on that, and it should open a new tab where it goes to Observing with NASA. And um, as you can see, uh, you can control your own telescope using the Micro Observatory Robotic Telescope Network. And to do that, um, we're going to click on this first tab over here called Control Telescope. Okay. Um, once we click there, it's going to ask us to select a target. Now, there are many targets depending on the astronomical heavenly body you'd like to choose, whether it's a planet or a, uh, a nebula or a star cluster or, um, or, an, or a galaxy like the Andromeda, which is available. And as you can see, there are others that are unavailable that may be due to weather patterns or just uh, maintenance on the actual telescope. Um, but for today's uh, tutorial, we're going to start with a uh, simple target, which is the moon, which is uh, right there above our heads. So let's click on observe. And it's going to take us to adjust your telescope settings. Okay, now this is where we have three types of settings, field of view, exposure time, and filter selection. First, we're going to choose our field of view. Um, we could get a wide area of the sky, uh, a angular for smaller, uh, smaller angular size for for objects that you want to zoom into, and then there's a normal view. For for our tutorial today, we're going to select normal and exposure time. Let's let's click on a second. Aha! As you can see, there's an Error, error warning right here saying image may be overexposed. So if it's overexposed, that means the shutter is open too long. So obviously the the only correct choice would be for 0 0.1 seconds, the less than a blink of an eye. Um, and as you can see, we got the green check mark saying optimal exposure time. Uh, the filter selection here, uh, there is only one selection. And uh, what it does, it, it's, uh, it's, it's light blocking for bright objects. Now the moon is pretty bright. Um, so let's select the gray filter for that and then down here we will go to continue and that will take us to our contact information now once you once you set up the telescope to take the image of your item and you set up the settings the exposure time the uh, uh, I mean the the view the exposure time and the the gray filter, uh, it's going to ask for your contact information. Um, you're going to enter it in here. Uh, obviously, this is my stuff right here, and as you can see, I'm most likely an average astronomy expert, uh, maybe less than average. Let's change that to a four. <laughs> um, and yeah, they could contact me, sure, uh, in the future. So we're going to go to submit, and um, uh, your request for the telescope image has been submitted. Uh, here are a few settings. Now, um, this basically is a summary of our settings and a, uh, of what we set up as far as the image that will be taken. And down here it tells us that uh, tomorrow or the next day you will receive an email notification from microobservatory support at cfa.harvard.eu with a link to download your image. And uh, 
As you can see, it says, keep your fingers crossed for clear skies. Now, what that means is there, uh, there is a slight possibility that the sky that the telescope that we used to take a picture of is cloudy. So, um, yeah, let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. But for this tutorial, we can also go into um, recently taken images. So let's click on our micro observatory image directory and uh, that'll load for us in just a moment. And here we go. Uh, recent micro observatory images and they're all separated by the date and the time uh, that the image was taken. Uh, this one was taken on November 19th uh, 2014, which was today, at uh, 5.08, uh, or, or at least it was processed by Ben, which is the name of some of the... Now, now these locations, these telescopes have individual names like Ben and Ed, you'll see. Um, but what we're, what we're going to try and look for now is, a, uh, is an image uh, of the moon. And as you can see under our objects, we have several moon pictures here. So let's start clicking and see what kind of images we have to play with today. It's a very interesting one. Let's click back and go to the next image. Ooh, that's kind of a really zoomed in shot there. As you can see, click on the third image of the moon. There is your cloudy sky, I believe anyway. Uh, I mean, those do look like clouds, but um, we're going to use an image that we found earlier today for the sake of this uh, uh, tutorial and that would be located here once we have selected our image uh, we are going to begin to open if you go back to the tab where it says control telescopes where we had our observing with NASA toolbar we're going to go to download software, uh, which is a very small little dumbed down version of uh, Photoshop um, in which we could uh, add color and uh, different styles and settings and, and filters to our image. Now, since I already have downloaded this software, uh, we are going to go ahead and open it up. under a folder called Micro Observatory Image Windows 2.3. Once you download the uh, software, uh, this will be the, the uh, folder that you're going to locate. And you could do that through searching for a folder or, or anything. And, and you're going to want to double click on where it says run.bat to run the actual program. Now, the first window, the uh, user window will show up. And then you have your image. Uh, template about to pop up and load. Now, uh, once this loads, it's going to look very, uh, very old school. As you can see, uh, it's just a blank screen here. Now, for the sake of our tutorial, we're going to add a pre saved image. Now, when you, as we go back here and you go to your image directory, when you save, when you these images have already been saved as GIFs, okay. Um, when the image is sent to you, um, it'll be more likely set as a uh, FITS file, a FITS file. So you'll have to convert it to a a GIF. That's pretty simple. Once you uh, um, put the image, the FITS image into the um, micro observatory image manipulating software um, that's where you'll be able to file save it save as GIF okay and rename it and make sure once you rename it to add the extension dot GIF yourself okay so um, as you can see this is an, an image a pre-selected image of the moon that we took and as you move the cursor over the image you could see um, the different uh, uh, the, the pixel values and the 
uh, x, y locations, the numbers on those changing. And as you can see, when we're in the, a, the brighter, more detailed area, the pixel count is larger. When we're in the darkened area, the pixel count starts to, or starts to diminish. So um, the process tab here is going to allow you to adjust your image, which, as you can see here through this toolbar, you could brighten it or darken it. Okay. You could add filters like color tables of red, green, and even different filters like spectrum. And ice to give you different images to manipulate your image and add and add your own personal touch of color to uh, um, to an astronomical body. Uh, once you've done uh, creating uh, your colorful image, you go to File and Save As, and you're done. With your micro-observatory image completed, we will now get on to Wordle. All right, welcome to the Wordle tutorial. Wordle is a uh, toy for generating word clouds from text that you provide. Um, you can locate this at www.wordle.net. Um, and as you can see here from the examples, there are some really cool stuff that we could create as a complementary piece to our Youth Captures the Colorful Cosmos uh, artwork that we created in the previous tutorial with the Micro Observatory website and the Micro Observatory software. Um, so let's get started. Uh, as you can see, um, uh, it's a pretty self-explanatory. Just click here to create your own. Now, this text box here is going to be filled with the words that all of you students, um, as you're rotating around the desks and start writing uh, words into the um, the piece of paper that's on uh, you know, the, every workstation, uh, once you get back to your desk, you're going to notice all these words. So let's uh, put in a sample um, of words. Uh, let's say stars and bright and deep. Universe, just some kinds of astronomical uh, vocabulary, you know, uh, comets, uh, beautiful, I mean, stuff that would describe what you would, uh, what comes to mind when you uh, see, uh, see a beautiful image uh, from outer space. And, uh, you know, uh, multiple of the same words are. Uh, welcome uh, because as you'll see once I start uh, entering these words uh, we're going to do a uh, quick uh, copy and paste here just so we could get a nice uh, get a nice uh, group of words because by the time like I said you get back to your desk you have all these words so um, all you do is enter all the words here and hit go and Wordle will generate um, a beautiful piece of artwork using um, different uh, fonts and different layouts. Oops, so we gotta run that. And um, this is just a uh, uh, an example right here. And what you could do is um, you could either uh, print it, you could open it to a window, you could save it to a public gallery for everyone to see, uh, or you could randomize. That is our presentation of Youth Captures the Colorful Cosmos featuring Wordle. On behalf of myself, Babel E. Daniel, and my partner, Joy Jones, we thank you.